And so it begins. Dark were the skies and chill was the wind as the land was covered in a veil of malice. Across the hill did ride the dread army of the night, cloaked in mist and fog, prepared to rain down death and destruction upon the land. And the people did cry out for a savior, a noble soul to save them from their impending demise. Just as it seemed all was lost, in strode a mighty hero, clad in shivering metal from head to toe. Wielding a terrible broadsword, he did cleave his foes in two, smashing their ranks asunder of righteous fury. And when the day was done and the enemy strode across the fields in pieces, the people did turn to the warrior and say, We shall name this day in your honor. Speak unto us your wisdom. The warrior said one word that day. Epic! One man, one murloc, one giant angry badger. This is Blue Please. It begins now. Indeed, folks, welcome, welcome, welcome to Blue Please on WoW Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. I felt we had to kind of speed things up a bit because I was running out of pre-show and I want to just, just stick in a few more songs, so there you go. What are we got coming up for you on the show today? Well, first I can tell you the date, which is the 24th of March, 2009. It is 8pm GMT. In other times, it is times that I do not care about. Well, GMT is the true time, the rest are fakers, false, false prophet times. Should be ignored and perhaps tied to a stake and burn for heresy. Heresy! Delicious heresy. What do we got coming up for you in the show today? Well, well, well. Oh, well, well, well. It is very rare that I get so, so wound up, so angry, so furious, so righteously indignatious, if that's a real word. I don't care. I'm not right, self righteous and sanctimonious today. Oh, yeah, all of those other adjectives and stuff. Blizzard has done something which annoys me. It doesn't just such annoy me, it plays to a center of my brain that contains the kind of rage that could only be summoned via satanic rituals and days and days of preparation, perhaps the sacrifice of a thousand virgins, and the summoning of an honorable pig demon. Or perhaps a dishonorable pig demon. Yes, let's go with dishonorable. A dishonorable pig demon summoned from the very nethers of hell itself. That goes some way to describing how annoyed I am at a specific change, and I will be telling you about that a little bit later on in the show. Also, Ghostcrawler promised me a pony. He didn't give me the pony. That makes me mad! Ah! We're talking about Ghostcrawler promising ponies to people a little bit later on in the show, and announcement that Arcanist Belt, our level 60 raiding content project thingy, the guild on Anachronous EU, has killed Ragnaros, yes indeed. So we're going to be doing a retrospective on Molten Core, or Molten Boar, identifying was there anything actually good about that instance and probably coming to the conclusion that no, no there was not. However, if you wish to be involved in Arcanist Belt, we have opened up some recruiting again, yes we have. We've killed Rag, folks, we're going on to interesting content now, oh yes. If you want to join in the fun, you can either transfer an existing 60 or you can roll up a new one, and we recommend the Recruit Friend program. Check out ArcanistBelt.com. Yes, indeed, we have many, many, many spots available for certain classes. And those of you who have signed up to the guild and are part of the guild and haven't been showing up to raids recently, show up! You're missing out on epics and awesome progression. You guys fail. Saturday, we've got a raid. Go show up to it. Got some optionals on Wednesday and Thursday. Do it. Do it now! Or on Saturday, which is probably more appropriate. Don't do it now, there won't be anyone on. Yes, indeed. Of course, we cap off the show with the illusion of choice. Yes, I did say the illusion of choice! <laughs> Dangerous. Health and safety hazard, that dropping. The illusion of choice will coming up later. It gives you the opportunity to submit the last topic for the show. Email the at gmail.com. That is the murloc at gmail.com. If you would like to submit a potential topic for the last 15 minutes of this show. Yes, indeed. Now, it is time for a segment that, quite frankly, handily fills in approximately 12 minutes of the episode and takes virtually no effort from myself. It's... Uh... Mail time! 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 Mail time!
That sounds like it's mail time. Here's the mail. Oh, it never fails. Oh, it makes me want to wag my tail. Oh, when it comes, I want to wail. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's mail time. All right, how about an interesting email in here from Totally Twink. That is a terrible name. He's planning on getting a name change. He actually realized how bad a name that is, but it's like, did you accidentally just get to 80 with that? Did you not notice up until level 80? It's like, hmm, <laughs> I appear to have a stupid name. Hmm. Oh, it's all right, just level up to 80. Oh, I have a stupid name, right. Now I get it. Now I can get it changed. He's from Undermine US. Go, go mock him. Go send him, like, something horrible in the mail. Some rotting meat. He says this, Hey TB, I haven't really been on WoW for a while, since I'm not really all that interested in the current endgame content, and let's face it, who can blame him? But I was going through YouTube, and I found a video, an old one that showed me the graphical artwork of yogg Saron, his lair, his tentacles, his brain, and it kind of reminded me of Cthun, and I was wondering if you know anything about it, since you've basically been raving about old for a while. If they are really doing this, do you think that they're basically bringing back Cthun? And also, if old is really what you're talking about, are you going to be leaving Arcanist Belt for it? Well... I'm not entirely sure why people are so surprised that he's got the whole tentacles, brain, lair thing going on. I mean, I don't know much about the lore, but last I checked, yogg was an old god, and so was Thun, so there's going to be some similarities there. And fighting gods is, you know, kind of fun. As regards to the actual encounter, I know basically nothing about it. I've been deliberately avoiding reading about these encounters whenever possible. I know stuff like what the Flame Leviathan does and Freya and a couple of other encounters, but I'm deliberately trying to avoid it. Why? Because I'd actually like to enjoy the content as a challenge and not get as many advantages as humanly possible before doing that, which is the very reason I've been playing on the PTR. Uh-huh. It's rather important to me that I ensure that my personal enjoyment of the game is going to be high over the next couple of months. Otherwise, I won't be doing Blue Please anymore. I'll be doing Isk Please, like for EVE Online or something. You know, something that will actually keep me going for a reasonable length of time. You know, if WoW can't fill that earth, then don't expect this show to continue to exist. I mean, that's just how it goes. So, I'm certainly hoping that Old WoW will provide. I don't wish any failure upon Blizzard, absolutely not. Self-destructive. Now, as regards to Arcanist Belt, the thing you've got to realize about Arcanist Belt, and this is something I've had to explain to so many people on the forums, is that the reason people are forming guilds like Arcanist Belt and doing this kind of novelty content, going back to what they would... Back to their roots, as it were, doing the old content. It's because there's not enough new content. And I'm surprised that people don't get this, like, Oh, well, this isn't fun. Oh, the new content's so much better. Well, it really isn't. I mean, the new content is the old content. Nax is old content. How can you mock the old content when the vast majority of the new content is the same as the old content, but declawed? What you've now got, you've got Malagos, which is relatively challenging. You've got Sarth... Which is, of course, not challenging unless you do it in 3 Drakes mode. I mean, Sarth is a good fight, don't get me wrong, but it is only still one fight. And VOA, which is just an insult to raiding in general. So, it's pretty obvious why people are going back to the old stuff. And TBC had a bunch of really good instances, particularly after they fixed them. If you look at them, it's like Karazhan, pretty good instance, too much trash. Zolomon, very well designed instance. Very challenging bosses, very good there. In my opinion, the peak of Ten Mans. Really. I'd like to see them beat that. I'd like to see them top that in a full-size 10-man instance. Because, in my opinion, Zolomon is just absolutely stellar in every respect. Serpentine Cavern. Very good. Very good instance. Some very good bosses in there. Particularly Vash. Vash, a very entertaining encounter. Of course, I. Not a bad instance. I mean, half of the bosses kind of sucked. But Alar was a good fight. And so was Kael'thas. Kael'thas, very inventive. Very challenging. And then he got on a Black Temple, which was generally considered to be a very good instance. Mount Hygel, which was considered to be at least interesting, particularly from a lore perspective, and Archimon being an exceptionally good encounter. The rest of them, not so much. And then, of course, Sunwell Plateau, which most people would consider to be, and do currently consider to be, the peak of 25-man raiding. Indeed, Blizzard having said they're never going to make something that challenging again, which is somewhat disappointing, to say the least. So it's like, you wonder why people want to go back to this old content. A lot of them haven't done it, particularly old world stuff. A lot more people ended up doing the TBC stuff, particularly after they nerfed it. But the old world stuff, no way. I mean, you'd be surprised. Like, about half of our guild who went and killed Ragnaros on Saturday had never seen him. I mean, that just boggles the mind. 
And if they had seen him, they certainly hadn't seen him level appropriate. Well, they'd seen him at level 80 where five people can kill him. And they just laugh at him. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Not anymore. He's intimidating. Particularly to a level 60. It's like, well, I've only got 4k hit points so you can do this thing which hits me for like 3k. And then I might land the lava and die. You know, that's pretty intimidating. He was intimidating back in the day. The fact that he's Xbox Huge tends to help. But yeah. There won't be a need for guilds like Arcanist Belt and stuff like that if they bring out enough good, interesting content to keep people raiding. People want to raid, but they can't because there isn't enough content. I want to be raiding all week. I can't raid all week. For God's sake, we clear everything in four hours. The only thing that we're actually doing to try and make progress right now, and this is just for the sake of having something to do, is attempts on Saw 3D 10-man, which is rock friggin' hard. That's fine, but in the end of the day, we're not a 10-man guild and we never wanted to be. Would have been nice to have some challenging 25-man content. But, no, yeah, I can't really complain. At least there's something I can do, I must say. But, I don't see why people are just so confused as to why people want to do the old raid content at level appropriate. That's why. That is why they're doing it. They're just trying to find anything to keep them playing the game. As opposed to simply being, actually, no, there's, I'm afraid, nothing left to entertain us as raiders at all. So, we're just going to stop. That's not very good, is it? I wouldn't want to do that. Now, got an interesting email here. It's from Antoinette, the Immortal. He's a level 80 Night Elf Druid from OTM on Black Flight US, and he says this. Conquering RNG. Make a case for the Immortal. Hey there. Sorry for the wall of text. I just wanted to pre say free face this. Well, we don't need the compliments. So let's go for this. He says, I do, however, have to disagree with your opinion with the Immortal. Being that it... Saying that it is too RNG based. It all starts with the common adage, life isn't fair. No matter how hard Blizzard tries, RNG in the game will always play more of a role than people would like. From server lag, ISP lag, emergencies at home... The same thing is mirrored in life. Not everyone is born with the same opportunities. Some are born with a silver spoon in the mouth, while others are born into destitution. But determination can conquer the hand that life has dealt you through hard work and perseverance. I feel the immortal slash undying is the epitome of a great guild achievement and the best measure of a guild in this wimpy content. It requires tight, not flawless, play over a whole lockout as a guild. If you do happen to lose it to RNG beyond your control, you should be able to give it another go. If your raid is good enough as a whole, each of the 25 players, I see it being highly unlikely that you will not have Immortal after four weeks of tight play. Point is, the good guilds will get this achievement if they persist at it. Then he gives a bunch of kind of obvious tips, which I don't really need to read. I, I understand where you're coming from here, really. I mean, in an ideal word, I, I would think the Immortal is a, would be a stellar achievement, really. The problem is, particularly... To be honest, the Immortal would have been better before Wrath came out. The problem simply comes down to this. Wrath's service stability has gone down the toilet. Seriously. Since launch. And it's mostly due to Wintergrasp. They've admitted that, and yet they haven't fixed it. Now, in my opinion, a novelty PvP arena, which is effectively what it is. Don't tell me there's a challenge to it. It's ridiculous. You just face roll the entire encounter. For God's sake, most people don't even realise that you can get into the sides of the siege vehicles and DPS from them. I'm driving around a siege vehicle and like, hey, get in, DPS. No, they don't do it. Or I'm trying to get in a siege vehicle and they won't stop moving. I say, hey, stop, I'll help you DPS. They won't do it. It's the same with the blinking Strand of the Ancients. Like saying, oh, you guys, you want to win? Put some range DPS in those vehicles. No, no, they don't do it. They just face roll into it. And they hope that they win and then complain when they don't. It's not difficult. But to be honest, if I had to sacrifice Wintergrass, which is relatively fun, don't get me wrong, for stable servers, then in a heartbeat, I would say, for God's sake, kill Wintergrass. Better yet, fix the servers. It's been how many months now, and we've had the same problems. I get so many emails in, you would not believe, every week, by people saying, you know what, we were going to get the Immortal, but we had Thaddeus, which is a lagging account to begin with. It's been a lagging account for three and a half years, for God's sake. The first time Danny was to support in, it caused server lag. The mechanics of the fight break the servers, and yet they still have not been fixed. Now combine that with the fact that Wintergrasp is balking the servers up, and you've got an essence for fail pie. It's horrible. And I've seen this happen. And people say, oh, well, there's ways and means around it, but there really isn't. Because a lot of the time, you don't realize someone's DC'd until it's too late. If they're not speaking on vent... 
and they're not obviously deceding game, which is entirely possible, then for God's sake, how do you work around that? It's incredibly hard. Now and impossible. And in my opinion, the measure of a guild's ability to do content at the moment is SAR 3D. SAR 3D 25 man and SAR 3D 10 man. And yeah, we're working towards SAR 3D 10 man, because that, that's an encounter where no mistakes can happen. I've seen it. One mistake and the entire thing collapses. Literally. I have never seen anything that intense since the way Archimon used to work. One mistake. One death. This isn't even just one death. This is one false step. And that's great. I like that. It's just a shame there's not an instance full of that kind of stuff. But no, the Immortal just causes so much drama that I don't think it's worth having. They've changed it in Old Wars, you may have noticed. They've now changed it so that you basically have to kill all the bosses without dying, but you don't have to do it in the same reset. So you can kind of gradually build it up. Now, in some respects, I find that rather unfortunate because I don't think that's actually a measure of skill at all. Or the ability to raid. Not dying. Well, you should be dying anyway. Yes, I understand that not dying through an entire run is a big deal and a huge achievement. The problem is, is when it should have happened, by all rights it should have happened, and you get screwed over by the server. And that happens so much, and it happens way more than you might think, particularly when dealing with Thaddeus. Which is, again, a laggy encounter, and has been for three and a half years. God, if you lived with Kiki Jiki when he was doing Thaddeus, good lord, the howls, the screams, the rage. You could feel it through the floorboards, my god. And yet, it still hasn't been fixed. No, I find that somewhat suspect. You're listening to Blue Please here on WoW Radio with myself, Total Biscuit, and I'll be right back after this. Enjoy. <laughs> 